And you make me feel. Uh, uh, and you make me feel. Ooh, 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 and you make me feel like a natural mims. Oh! <laughs> hey, girl, hey! Wow. I hope that wasn't too many bars. Like, I hope that wasn't. Too well, many bars. if it is, then we'll pay the 50 cents. We're <laughs> Well, we got to do 50 cents for the bars. We got to do another $250 because they're like, that wasn't Jennifer Hudson. Um, <laughs> not even Aretha. Not even uh, Carol King. It was not I'm Jennifer saying, Hudson. Man, all, talk about the, all that Oscar buzz just kind of went away, didn't it? We were all excited at the middle of the year, and now it's like, well, I don't know. How... It, yes. it turns out Gaga's Oscar buzz, buzz is kind of going well i mean apparently the oscar buzz for her performance is still there but it's just the rest of the movie unfortunately is not. you know that worked for meryl streep I know, and right? the iron lady right, exactly i mean this is the you know this it seems like this is a wonky all of almost everything that they've been predicting for like the big best picture or best actress oscar things everyone that's come out the the reviews have been wonky for all of the movies Except for their performances. So I watched When Harry Met Sally this morning. It was just on TV. It's a great movie. I love, I, know, I hate, I, know. I hate Billy Crystal. I, I do not think Billy Crystal is funny. Well, okay. I mean, I don't hate him. I shouldn't say that. I think he's a very good person. Like, wow. I think, I think he's a good person, but Mr. I do not Saturday like Saturday night. I mean, you know, he's got kind of like a comic icon at this point. Yes. Yes. Isn't that, isn't that great that I don't like? that kind of comedy that's not funny um Whoa. so <laughs> oh my God. so yeah so there's that um but i i i had always thought meg ryan was nominated for an oscar for it always no no, no she wasn't no no, no. she wasn't that they gave it they did a best su supporting actress um oscar or a best supporting actress nomination went to the lady at the table beside her that said i'll have what she's having she got an Oscar, and I'm, I'm shaking. She didn't get it. I was about to say, I, I was going to believe you. Like... I, I saw your face, and now you're like, I was like, wait, I should stop. I, should... I mean, you know. Um, yeah, I love, I actually really love that movie. I love Moonstruck. I don't know if you knew that. I love Moonstruck. Oh, I love Moonstruck, too. Cher and Olivia yeah. Caucus. Oh, um, Moonstruck's a wonderful movie, actually. Uh, it yeah. really is. Dear listeners, if you are so young that you have not seen Moonstruck, Go out there and watch it. It is a good movie. It is that scene where she's walking home with the dude, the 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 dad from Frasier, mm -hmm. and they're like, and she's like, "No, you can't come upstairs." What? what? I'm I'm still in love with my husband. I, yeah. I hate him, but I'm still in love with him. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, dear <laughs> listeners, we need to apologize for last week. Um, I know we're so sorry. We are so sir. sorry. We sorry. are so sorry. So it turns out that um, Murder She Wrote is a little harder to do, and we can only do one a week. And like with Baking Sugar and uh, Designing Women, if we ever need to, we could do two per week. Yes. But we have to go through a lot. For, for There's a lot of episodes. For lot. yeah, and like I I I had a jubi interview. And, um, which they, they put on hold, so I'm not very... I'll say what? I don't like that. I know. Um, so, uh, yes, they're looking for additional talent just to see what da 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, that's uh... why I said, I, I, I nearly said, oh, you can redact <laughs> my resume. You can, you can remove me from the talent pool. But I was like, no, 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 no. Because I did come in asking for executive fish money. Oh, okay. So okay. I it, it, I will admit it was probably on me a little bit. A I mean, little. Yeah, but let's be real. Let's be real, real right now. That's kind of the market at the moment. Ain't that you the know, point? Uh, what? what? So I was like, treat me the way I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Treat me right. Treat me. <laughs> oh my God. Oh Lord. Uh, so, uh, 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 
Is that good yeah. enough for an intro, or do you want to? I mean, I guess so. I I don't know. I do. Oh, oh here. no! There's something else. There's something else. Oh, this God. this this will this this episode will be coming out tomorrow. So let's wish everybody a happy, happy turkey, whatever. Thanksgiving, I guess. Uh, yeah, guess like or yeah, that's very interesting <laughs> coming from an indigenous person. But here we are. <laughs> happy Native Peoples Day. So, happy Native you know. Peoples Day. Happy yeah. Happy day to happy why just giving. Giving thanks, period. Why, we don't have to have know, a date. Why, 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 don't, why don't we just, like, turn it into happy late fall holiday, right? Like, we Isn't should just Halloween? have a... Huh? Isn't that Halloween? It's a day we get off work. Like, oh. there should be just a three-day, three-work day, like, every third... What am I trying to say? Hold on. Find your... We sense. should go to our four-day work week. I mean, Yes. But that's beside the point. I was going to see, say once a month, we should have a three-day work week. Like the last week of the month, every month, just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, off. I'm down. I mean, I would support that. I'm all for socialism. Yeah, um, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, also, we found out today, and I hope this does not offend any of our listeners, and if it does, you should be listening to us anyway. <laughs> that all of the uh, plaintiffs in the Ahmad Arbery case were found guilty. guilty. Oh, yeah. That's guilty. Yeah. It turns out Wisconsin is now a southern state and Georgia is now a northern state. <laughs> it's like Freaky Friday on a Thursday. I know. And it turns out that you can't lynch in Georgia anymore. Did you know that? What? Oh man, I did not get that memo, but thank you for letting me know. So you can now you that. can now travel up through through Florida. Well, you got to go by boat fr- from from the south of the Florida up to Savannah, but you could then take ninety five from Savannah through North Carolina. You yeah. you can't you can't go west because it's still legal in Alabama, Mississippi. I do apologize. All but, right, I wasn't going there anyway. It's okay. It's okay. I'll never put my feet in those states. Ever, never, ever. Not even Mobile. Not even Mobile, girl. Mobile. Biloxi. No. I don't care how good their barbecue is. I ain't going there. Now, girl, when we go on tour, we're probably going to be at Biloxi. All right. But we have to get me some extra security. <laughs> and what, what, what? Shreveport, Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. I mean... You know what though? Let's be let's be super honest. I'll just walk around in a caftan. They'll they'll probably not think I'm even black. So there you go. I, I, I don't. So that dude last night at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> so dear listeners, I went to a uh, absinthe. Oh no! Don't do that, Eric. Don't do that, Miss Mims. Um, <laughs> I was I was readjusting my headphones and my voice probably went a little wobbly. Whatever. I went to an absinthe bar called Aunt Betty's last night. Shout out to Aunt Betty's in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and they, they, there was this dude there, one of the bartenders slash barbacks, reminded me so much of Mame. Like, small, looked kind of like Shangela, but with Mame's skin tone, but Shangela's hair, and bright orange Chuck Taylors on, and Ooh. it it was neurotic. <laughs> In, so, a, in a good way. <laughs> I'm excited though, because this means like when I come home, we're gonna um go on the Maury Povich show because I think we have to do a paternity test. You are. Did you hear about Wendy Williams? No. What happened? Oh, Wendy supposedly, Williams? supposedly the rumor mill is now, and you know you're hearing it here. Last. <laughs> <laughs> the rumor mill is now. She's got early stage dementia and is in a wheelchair no and that she can't even host anymore and they're looking for a permanent replacement oh no that's sad no and the permanent replacement they're looking at is sherry shepherd i love sherry shepherd ham i mean that's the best thing she ever did. <laughs> that was it that was no 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 you may forget she was a beauty shop Oh, that's right. She was in Beauty Shop. Uh-huh. But I mean, I watched that like, this morning too. <laughs> she wasn't like a standout in Beauty Shop. She no, no, no. That's just Beauty that's Shop. just lesbian icon Queen Latifah. Oh man. Which I I, love it. I I I don't I don't I don't remember any of Queen Latifah's rap. Is that wrong of me? 
U and I T Y. I remember that one. That's a unity. U and I T Y. U and I remember actually a lot of the '90s. Um, what what did they call that that genre back then? It was called uh new jack the uh -huh. new jack swing i remember a lot of those raps because they were slower and it was easier like i once they started speeding up the raps i was done i was like it's I it's it's anything. it's so funny to me whenever you have the the, the nasal going on because <laughs> you go from a tenor to a baritone real fast it's crazy right uh -huh. it's awful my clients the my clients this week are just like uh should you be working and i'm like um I'll be right. I'll try to take half day. I know I don't sound great. I mean, when you start singing, you sound like that asshole preacher son that used to be your friend. <laughs> Speaking of that person, honey, uh -huh. um, uh, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mother Mabe actually ran into uh, the, the former first lady this past week. Right at angles. Oh. <laughs> of course, it's at angles. So yeah, what she said it was a re it was a nice conversation. It would it went real nice. I was like, that's nice. That's she prayed nice. for her soul right after, didn't she? I mean, I don't know. Any, I, don't, <laughs> I, I didn't guess all that that stuff. I was just like, oh, okay, thank you for letting me know. I almost burned that church down. But, <laughs> Which one? Because there were two in there you could have burned down. Like the well, the one that was right beside the house of the, ch the, the church gave them just out of the kindness of their heart after our whole church done paid for a house for them. That's that that church. Just saying. I'm just saying. Wait, what, 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 Oh, yes, Penny. You know how churches, you know how, like, Protestant churches, you know how they have, like, a parsonage, right? Like, yes, of course. So our church has a parsonage as well. Well, some, you know, they had a building fund for it and everybody paid for the house to get built. Oh, and yeah, because beautiful that's house. Yeah. And then just lo and behold, one day the church just decided to gift the parsonage to them. Wait, just gift it to them? Gift it to them. How did that go over with the dear parishioners? Oh, I don't know at this point now. It's been so long ago, but I'm still... <laughs> I still, to this day, I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> we could have used that money. <laughs> well, uh, let's get into this week's episode. <laughs> yes, let's talk about let's talk about Jeff Con. This is FYI. This episode is so amazing, and I forgot. I forgot rewatching it again. How much? how much I love this episode from watching it a few months ago. And this is the episode that inspired me that we needed to do the murder she wrote as a podcast. It was because of how ridiculous this episode was. This is episode one. No, no, this is not episode one. This is season one, episode four, Birds of a Feather. So we start off looking at Alcatraz. Yes. <laughs> and then the guest stars start popping on the screen. And it goes guest star Martin Landau as he starts jogging in a brown velour tracksuit with a dog uh, off lead illegally. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, oh so my gosh. we find out his name is Mr. Drake. And there's mm -hmm. this dude in a suit. Who's yelling at him? It's Mr. So Drake, funny. Mr. Drake, he needs money, Mame. They always need money, these be always people. They always need money. Money. The, the, the kid is not proud of what he had to do to, to make this money, but he needs his money soon. And yeah. Martin Landau's like, Howard, 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 Howard. I wrote down, so the dog is named Fritz, Fritz by the yes. way. Um, and I wrote down here, um, I just lo love Jeff Conway's hair. That's what my note was for this. I just love Jeff Conway. Oh, it is hair. Jeff Conway, which I know from. So I probably know him from something that you don't know him from. What do you know him from? The Babylon 5. Oh, I mean, I know him from Babylon 5, but I think, um, I think almost all of our listeners will know him from Greece. Oh, who was he in Greece? He was the second. He was the second T bird. So, so I, I'd like to, I'd real talk, dear <laughs> listeners. I've what? only ever seen Grease two. 
I have never watched Grease. I've seen that travesty <laughs> with Michelle Pfeiffer, but no, I have never seen. I don't want to say Grease. that we're going to start a. I don't want to say we're going to have a fight right now, but <laughs> number one, don't call Grease to a travesty. It is a landmark. Tra- um, what? It's a landmark. <laughs> Grease two is better than Grease one in many ways, okay. and. But Grease One, yeah, he's actually like the like like John Travolta. He's like second in command to John Travolta. Okay, okay. That's why when you said when you started it, I was like, wait, what is he gonna talk about? And then you said Bad Ball Fun. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 there are very few musicals I actually have really, really, really watched. Yes, but as a homosexual, I mean, it's kind of like we're kind of i mean it's 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 a necessary evil how are how in the world did you get through 41 years of being gay without watching and singing along with olivia newton john doing hopelessly devoted to you and like things like that like those are landmark things that we all experience yeah i made it so (laughs) i mean what what else what else is what else should i've watched what other gay musicals should yeah, you watch? Have you watched music- Have you watched Victor Victoria? No. Have you watched Mame the musical? No. <laughs> Cabaret. Yes, yes, girl, I've seen Cabaret. I've seen. It's got Liza. <laughs> this make a chorus line. No, God, I've seen parts chorus line. That's that's a lot. Yentl? That's huh? No, I've never seen Yentl. Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, God. I okay. have seen, uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, that that sounds very, <laughs> I don't want to get into a, uh, an ism here. Um, Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> I have seen Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, but I, I should have. So, dear listeners, <laughs> I, I was... The Butcher Lays a Wolf in Fiddler on the Roof. Not very well, mind you. Um, Mims, but. that was that particular year, that was a all hands on deck. Our teacher really wanted a certain person to be the star of that musical and wanted us to center everything on that uh-huh. person. Did not take into account the fact that we didn't have enough people to do the musical. No. Did, did not take into account that some people would have to be playing Four, five, six, seven uh-huh. different uh-huh. roles. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh-huh. Yeah. Oh boy. So, it so, was all terrible. So, uh, I listened to the person who was going to be the star of this, <laughs> and th- th- because they said, you know, to really feel a musical, to really feel a musical, you shouldn't watch anybody else do the musical or listen to the music. You know what? How I learn music is by listening to other people sing it because yeah. otherwise I don't know the words. I can't read and say the words back. So I, 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 you are a marvel. I, do. <laughs> I can still remember you and those little, that little weak wristed, those weak wristed actions. <laughs> <laughs> so, my my husband, Mr. Mr. Mims, um, is from Wisconsin. And he said that his high school put on an all white performance of the Wiz. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> the black person who was supposed to star in it was suspended just before. So what? So Wow. Why didn't they just like it why wouldn't Howie they just Mike. do the wizard why wouldn't they just do the Miz- Wizard of Oz? Like why wouldn't they just do that? I don't I don't understand. We now okay. meet Mike. Yes, Mike. Be- because Mike. Fritz Fritz scared Howard away. Yep. And he, D- Drake is like, I can live without you, Mike. I can live without you. I, I, I don't I don't I'm not gonna pay you more. If but we do learn Fritz is afraid of Mike. Because he Mike growls back at Fritz, and Fritz goes into the car. <laughs> yes, I love dog acting. Yeah. So now blah, 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 we're at the church, and someone is having a wedding 
an intimate wedding <laughs> with a really gay pastor. My gosh, it's an evil boy. Did you ever watch? Um... I oh wrote down God. why is I wrote down why is the priest so gay? I mean, he's a priest. Uh, who's got a who's got a children's choir in the back, which doesn't play that well now, does it? Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Did you ever watch what's the name of the show? The TV show Gilmore Girls. Did you ever watch Gilmore Girls? No. Oh, you never watched? That seems wide enough your alley. I don't like shows. <laughs> I, I like, I don't really like, I'm not really a person into, I don't really like romance things. Okay. Like the minute that happens on shows, I almost always tune out. Okay. So we learn, we learn that her aunt is from Maine. Do you think it oh. could be Jessica? No, it couldn't be Jessica. I mean, who else could, who, somebody else has to be from Maine that so comes on to the show. Howard shows up. And like he's because they're waiting for the groom and Howard shows up. He's like, my dear, I'm sorry I'm late. I've had to do some things. But but oh, no, I I have insurance business to do tonight and can't make it to dinner to meet your aunt, aunt, yes. auntie, auntie, auntie. <laughs> and so she she starts getting upset and then she pulls his handkerchief out. It's got lipstick on it. Yes, it does. Oh, Howard, that lipstick. That lipstick. <laughs> the whole the, during this episode, I thought about there's a thing down here on TV when people are, need help with like uh, issues called uh -huh. "Help Me, Howard." <laughs> and every time, every time they say his name, I was just like, "Oh Lord!" <laughs> so, as as she storms off, she says, "I don't know if you caught this." God knows I wouldn't want to drag you away from a client. I missed that. I, missed that. <laughs> I caught it in the rewatch. I was like, oh, foreshadowing. That was foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Okay. And it's impossible to actually know unless you rewatch the episode. <laughs> so we then we then go to a restaurant. This lovely restaurant. It's so nice. At, at, at the wharf. At the wharf. And, and, like, I have been to the wharf in San Francisco. Uh -huh. I do not remember there being any kind of restaurant like this there. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> this was in the this was in the eighties. This is uh it had been redone since then. Anyway, um, and 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 um, and there's a Maine lobster joke with Jessica looking in, saying, "Are these from Maine? These can't be Maine lobsters." <laughs> with her Maine accent, like her beautiful Maine accent. And then we we learned that Vicky, Vicky's the woman's name. Yes. He used to be an. He, they met in New York. Mm -hmm. Howard is an actor, insurance salesman, and cab driver. Yes. Triple threat. Yes, <laughs> and she would. She would um, marry Howard no matter what, mm -hmm. and yeah, like she's a good she's a good fiance. She's a great fiance. She's so sweet with her instant tanner. Yeah, I really i I felt like this show really could have used like a <clears throat> like a, a a sassy black girlfriend because she would not be marrying Howard if the sassy black girlfriend had been around. She would have been like. Right, that would it would that, that that sassy black girlfriend would not play into the demographic that's watching the show at the time. No, no, I know. I'm just saying, like in a real in a realistic realistic world, in a realistic world, I really I wish somebody had done that for her. I wish somebody could have been the sassy black girlfriend for her that she really needed right now. Well, you know, in in San Francisco, it could have been the sassy gay man. That's true. I feel you sorry for yourself. But it seems like it's hard to actually find actual gay men in this episode, despite its subject. No, no, I know, but despite its subject matter, it's a little. That gets. We'll get into that. That's yeah. where it gets really strange. So, so th she then utters a line that I, I was like, "What? What? You know, they always say there's nothing quite so romantic as San Fran after dark. Have you ever heard San Francisco?" referred to as romantic 
after dark. I've heard not from a straight white woman. I've heard many things about San Francisco. Of after dark, never romantic. That is not the word romantic. That's, <laughs> I mean, romantic unless romantic is your safe word. That's really the only time that word comes into play. Just saying. So we we, we learned that Howard was fired from his insurance job. Yeah, yeah. He always smells like perfume. He has lipstick that oh no that's not your color dear oh um like it, it is it, it is a it's real a... dark pink it is a <laughs> it, it's it's a it's a no it's not it's it's too dark to be a nude on me like it's it's well a... i mean like clearly clearly jessica's niece is more of a nude shade yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we know that yeah yeah but like it's it was it was like a dark pink like it was it was a like it a was harlot harlot it pink. was that color that would look like that would look good on a lightly melanated woman, which this, I guess Vicky is trying to be with that tanner, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> lightly melanated. I, I only said that to put a jab at Vicky. That's the only reason, <laughs> dear listener, that's the only reason I said that. She's real tan for no real reason. She is very tan. I mean, I could see it like the episode, if the episode had taken place in like Southern California. Yes. Yeah, or or like or like they said, hey, she's from Florida. Not yeah. she just flew in from New York mm-hmm. to San Francisco. Two places that are not known for being the sunniest in the world. No, no. whatever. <laughs> and he has all these nightclub matches around the house, and she wants yeah. to go investigate the nightclub. But is spying okay? Sure, that's, spying's that's, always okay. That's what I Jessica mean, thinks. It's weird, though, that, it was, like, so let's just be honest here and say, uh-huh. man, Howard, you are terrible at keeping secrets. Uh-huh. Terrible. Yes. Like, the, just the matches alone, it's like, what, why would you, what are you doing? Like, come on, dude. So so now we're at the club. We're at the club. At the club. And, and you look at the background, there's this woman kind of flailing around on the stage in this pink cap. And dress <laughs> like <laughs> in the background. <laughs> I, ju- I just, I just, I just caused Mame some some issues. <laughs> like, like, are you there? Okay, I'm better. I had okay, to call. You, oh my god! You have snot and tears coming out. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Dear listeners, I this is a good time for me to talk to about our Patreon while Mabe goes and gets herself back together. We have a Patreon. Um, it is at patreon.com backslash uh, you slay me. Um, we're hoping to make this free of commercials one day. And with your help, we really can do that. And we'd like to thank you for listening. Please like our podcast. Give us a rating. Um, we love our dear listeners. She's still not back yet, so I know I could edit this out, but that's a lot to do. And where is she? There she is. I am so glad. I just plugged Patreon. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, (laughs) jeez. So Barbara shows up. Yes. She's the office manager. Oh gosh! Now we're getting ready to go through a lot of characters, so I'm just gonna rip through them. No, okay? it's fine. You you shuffle through them because I'm still giggling about the, the drag queen singing. So then Pat, we meet Patterson, who's trying to get Freddie out of his contract. He's Freddie's agent. Then enter Jess and Vicky. Okay. Vicky is trying to get a club. They're like, no, 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 we can't do it. She goes up to Mr. Drake, whose first name is Al. We learned, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she's like, Martin Landau. <laughs> this is Jessica Fletcher. Get us a table. Holding that celebrity card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they give her the crappiest table in the place, mm-hmm. hidden behind a column. Yes. And then Freddie York comes on stage. The worst comedian. Oh, How you doing, man. everybody? My name's Freddie. You, York. you sure. for the the dear <laughs> listeners, you will remember. Gabe Kaplan from Welcome Back, Cotter from the 70s. Welcome back. 
that's all you the... did re- you did remember that right you knew that i'd one, right? hate to welcome back connor what it was okay. mr Carter. It, it was it was completely okay like i also i also i i have a controversial yet brave opinion Whoa. i i'm not the biggest fan of taxi either like i latka i I don't think he's funny. I I never found him funny. What's his name? Um, Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. I never found Andy Kaufman funny. All right. Okay. We're learning some new things about Mims today. Like what? Like you just said all of his stuff about your brave yet controversial opinions about iconic comedians. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that a far more gross person was doing far better comedy at the time. A far more gross person. Bill Cosby, girl. Bill Cosby. Oh, oh, in the seventies, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah doing... I love Bill Cosby in the seventies. And what? And 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 what's his name? Um. Oh my God. Oh my God. Bald head, slick black, gray hair. Um. The 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 bishop in uh. Dogma. Oh, George Carlin. Yeah, George Carlin. George Carlin. Yeah. <clears throat> That's George my Carlin's kind of comedy. Great. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Now I understand. Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. Oh, Richard. I really wish. I yeah. I, I realized that it was never his thing because that was back when TV and movies still kind of kept separated. But I do wish that Richard Pryor had at some point kind of transitioned into a sitcom world yeah. a little bit because yeah. I think that I think that what he could have brought. I know it wouldn't have lasted a long time. But I think what he could have brought to the art of sitcom back then may have like really sh- shifted the that world. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that at the point that he would have done it, he was probably getting he was probably too far yeah. in his disease and couldn't. He was right. I remember so, they, they tried a couple of things. I remember yeah. and it didn't go so well. Yeah. <sighs> so <sighs> Freddie Orks on stage. Hey, how you doing? This is my rim shot. But um, chew. But um, chew. But um, chew. But um, chew. You were just. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We're yeah. back in Sling Blade territory yeah. again. So then Miss Drake shows up in her blue eyeshadow. Uh, and I was like, girl, yeah. that is that is a blowback with blue eyeshadow. Amazing. It That's really amazing. is. She is living her eighties dream and we are all in it. Yep, I was um, I was I was living for it, honestly. <laughs> they show her to her table, which is in the dead center of everything. Mm, of course. And she tells, and uh, the the waiter's like, tell him, Fritz, Fritz, whoever Fritz is. But that's also the dog's, Felix, not Fritz, Felix. Felix, Felix, go back and tell Mr. Drake. She, Mrs. Drake is here. Yeah. So then Jessica says, there's something strange about this place. <laughs> Girl. And then there's, there, the announcer comes on. Now the person you've met, I've been waiting to see, Michelle Dupont, and Michelle Dupont is a drag queen. Drag queen. <laughs> drag queen. A drag queen. A drag queen. Uh, the art of uh, female illusion. Drag queen. Now this is the straightest drag club I've ever seen before. In we're my not. Life. No, hold on. We still not going to get into that yet. We're just going to talk about them as it's coming to us, right? Okay. So this just appears to be a normal old drag place now, because remember, they are in San Francisco, so it's not that strange, because those boys are weird out there. (laughs) Oh, and then, like, Barbara. Barbara comes running up. Stop that murderer! Stop that murderer! And then there's a drag queen running through in her pink dress. That woman that we saw on stage before was actually a man. She falls over. The wig falls off. Howard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And we learn Michelle Dupont is actually Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Shock and awe. Shock, Shock and, and awe. awe. Shock and awe. <laughs> God. Oh, why couldn't they have just been gay people? <laughs> I don't know. Look, why? I don't know because Paul Lynn didn't want to do it. Is that imagine this episode with Paul Lynn and 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 and, and Charles so Nelson much. Riley and oh my gosh, could you imagine? Yeah, Charles Nelson Riley was actually straight. 
Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he was married to a woman. No, girl. Are we sure? Yes, girl. Hold on, hold on. We're going to Google that real quick. <laughs> Google that. Charles. 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 While we're having our Google break, uh, be sure to um, make sure you store your turkey after cooking don't leave it in the fridge for too many days um you want to make sure to freeze it so that you don't get any um, bacterials uh growing on that turkey following your meal oh you're right he his, his partner's name is patrick hughes there you go girl i told you okay that all that that can't just be a impersonation <laughs> that's true that's true that's true but i thought i really honest to god thought that it was the weird like was it ever married to they divorced and she never remember. Oh, Briley was game real life. Okay, I know, I know. I, that's I thought that I'd heard. Maybe it was somebody else that I always thought was gay that wasn't. Um, like Dame Edna. Well, I knew that. Okay, well, I, that's, I was just dazzling. So where are we at in this? We got several more pages to go. <laughs> I mean, we need to kind of like speed through a little bit because we've been okay. swelling a lot on this beginning. So we just got through Howard. Howard's been revealed. Just yes. Now. So Vicky goes up to see him. They make up. Howard says she he didn't do it. So they take take her downtown to book her, and we meet Lieutenant Novak. That's right. Who's and so the secretary says she saw Howard with a gun. Um. And this this is back in Drake's office. So we're right. back in Drake's office. Novak was like, "Who saw this?" And the secretary was like, well, I saw him with the gun. I didn't actually see him shoot him. And Jessica's in there randomly. It was like, did you notice the feather on Drake's jacket? <laughs> I love it so much. Uh-huh. Oh, she just, like, pulls the most random yes. things. <laughs> did you notice there's a feather? <laughs> did you test the powder burns? We aren't there yet. <laughs> I'm just, I know. I'm just in the spirit of it. I got A it. nitric acid test. <laughs> so now we're at the police. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I can start making turkey noises. <laughs> anyway. No, no, please. please, please. <laughs> um, so. Freddy signing a shows up on the it is okay it, it's registering my voice i don't know how well it's registering but freddy didn't uh, i didn't do it and then we're kind you're of... scaring everybody away right now. <laughs> <laughs> well that's good killers are scary <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry dear listeners did i reveal the ending <laughs> <sighs> well there we go <laughs> This has been you, Lady. <laughs> thanks, thanks for listening. <laughs> so, at the police, Jessica then shows up. We find that the gun was from New York. Yes. And Jessica's like, "We, well, I need to talk to you. And the, the uh, Lieutenant Novak's like, get out of my office. And she's like, well, you know, I canceled a meeting this morning with, with a television show. But if you don't talk to me now, I'm going to take that and rather talk about my new sixth book. It's it's like been a month that she's already been six of these damn things. Yeah, because, you know, she's just spitting them out. Six, they didn't say, four, they, didn't say they, they didn't say they were good issues. That's true. Straight to paperback. We learned about that in the previous, in, in, in that horrible episode of Baking Sugar. <laughs> It still bothers me how old he was compared to Suzanne. Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, Jessica threatens to take them on TV and ruin them. Well, she, that's got them thinking differently now. Yes. So she asks, has a nitric acid test been performed on Howard's hand? Mm -hmm. No one had not. They're getting ready to do that. And can she talk to him? Lieutenant yes. Novak says no. Then she's finally like, okay, well, I'll, I'll see him anyway. So they bring Howard in, and a leather daddy, he's actually cast as leather daddy number one in what? the credits, uh, or leather man number one, um, asks <laughs> Howard out. There you are, Mame. There's your gay moment. 
yeah there's the there's the gay moment there uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. so howard sits down and she t- says i want to tell you exactly what to say how and she makes howard feel guilty about lying and um he, howard says he oh, he only entered the theater for money and drake held up his pay so he just came in to talk he stopped by he stepped on the gun was like picked it up was this yours is this your gun (laughs) mr drake i will not be ignored (laughs) i love it so much and then he turns him around and he was shirt a very bloodless wound mind you very bloodless like it was really nothing's there (laughs) and then barb walks by and starts screaming oh 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 it's always it's always barbs always we we found out that mr drake and barb were having an affair you better shut your mouth what i know right what Barb, it's always just, the barbs. Always, I thought I knew you, Barb. That's really Barb, upsetting. Barb, Barb, I believed in you, Barb. Barb I believed I still in you. Believe in you because you you have a role to play that moves this along in about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we learned that the time of death is nine fifty to ten o five, which mm-hmm. is very short window. Yes. And Jessica's like, how do you know that? Because it was a set, and the drums hid the gunshot. That's right. It was perfectly timed with the perfectly set. Perfectly timed with the set. So we also learn a lot of things. <laughs> Jessica then goes to meet Bill Patterson, or goes back to the club. Yep. We meet Bill Patterson again. He's a skis. He is super skeezy. And we find out that Mrs. Drake and Mike are sleeping together. What? But I thought that Mike was just a drag queen. He's a heterosexual also? Of course, he's a heterosexual drag queen. That's what they did in the 80s. <laughs> okay. <That's>... Yes, yes. <laughs> Thanks, RuPaul, for, 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 for <laughs> gentrifying that for us and taking it back. Thank you. Thank you, RuPaul, for getting gay men back into the dress. God. Yeah, like, like it, it, it was a straight man's game until 2010. Apparently. I like, know, like, apparently. RuPaul just, I remember going to the gay clubs when I was first coming out, and then all of those, like, straight men <laughs> drag queens were just, like, they had to, it was very bad because they were straight men, but they had to get fake boobs to feel like they were part of a, the group and i, I mean it's hard it's hard. hard it's hard it's hard for those folks i mean straight men have had a, a comp they've i mean think about all of the afflictions that they've had to suffer in these last 40 years with gay men taking over yep i know right i know i know i'm ashamed I know. to be a gay man right now i'm ashamed so ashamed so ashamed <laughs> so uh Jess meets Freddy. Um, Jess, oh, I really love the view in this room. Mm-hmm. And she's looking down at the couch. And Freddy's like, yeah, I couldn't get more money, but at least my bill got me this, 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 this view. But don't you? <laughs> wow. This is you're gonna ride you're gonna ride this one to the end, are you? You're gonna ride this one to the end. Oh, all how many seasons of this are there? <laughs> Lots. Yeah, all Lots. a lot seasons of it. <laughs> and listen, dear listeners, you hate it, but to hate say you hate it, you need to comment. <laughs> leave, a leave a Patreon donation. <laughs> leave a Patreon donation. That's one of our tiers. No, it's not. Oh, we can we make have it one. a tier. We can make it a tier. We can make it a tier. Shut Mems up. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be Mame. We'll get and, like this really random five hundred thousand dollar donation from Billy Bob Thornton saying, "Stop taking my stick." <laughs> oh, just send me a little bottle of your blood in a vial, and I'll wear it around my neck like Angelina Jolie did. You forget about that. Yes, did you I forget did. about that? In that group. Forgot about that. Oh. Most people have their name written on a, pe- a grain of rice. She had a vial of his blood. Yeah. 
So have you ever heard, just aside, I'll take a little aside and we'll keep going in a minute. <laughs> there is a place in Italy that, that every year performs a miracle, okay? They have a vial of saint's blood that's solid, okay? okay? And every year they turn it back and forth three times and it returns to liquid. And they call it a miracle. That's not how miracles work. That's just what blood does. But whatever. <laughs> ah. <laughs> like, like, it, it, blood naturally coagulates. Shake it up a little bit. Break it apart. Turns back to liquid. It's, yeah. Let them enjoy themselves. I know. That's just what I heard and was like, that one. that one's easily disproven. Like, you can just take somebody else's blood, put it in an airtight vial, and do that to it. Anyway, where, where are we at? Um, yeah, so uh, Jessica goes to meet, see Barb, because she knows Barb. Barb. She Barb. Knows she knows there. Barb. She and knows Mrs. Drake there. fires Barb. What? Yes. So Jessica has a look on her face, goes downstairs, and has a taxi waiting for Barb to pick her up. And so then Barbara has a, she always does something in Confidential and has a full, you didn't hear it from me, but conversation with Jessica. Which perfect. It really was. <laughs> so Jessica says, well, you know Drake was dead when, when we came in the room, right? She's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. So Jessica finds out that this is where she finds out that Mrs. Drake and uh, Mike are having an affair. Mike was trying to buy the club. And Bill Patterson had a Freddie in a seven-year contract. But there were lots of like offers from Vegas and Branson, probably. Branson? Branson. No, they, would not, they wouldn't hire Freddie and Branson, girl. You already know that. I know. We all we already know why. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so now we're at the wharf. At the back at the wharf. And uh, Mike is staring off at the Golden Gate Bridge, and like uh, she's like, "You just gonna buy it?" <laughs> so they have a conversation of. Did you? I didn't do it. Did you? But if you did, it's okay because we hate him, right? We get our story straight in case you did it. But I didn't do it. Did you do it? Mm -hmm. And like lots of bump, bump, bump moments and like little hugging each other and giving side eye and all of that. It's a lot. So now we're back at the club. Sorry, we're sorry, dear listeners. We're going back and forth. Um, the nitric acid test was negative. Yay! Which means he didn't do it. Y yay! Yes, right? We were excited about it. Yeah, well, Mr. No Lieutenant Novak's like, but he could be wearing gloves. And she's like, oh, that Novak. He doesn't trust anybody. But then Jessica was like, well, why would, why would this prince be all over it if he wasn't wearing gloves? If he was wearing gloves. You okay over there? Yeah, I just had the loogie. That's all. I don't want to do it on microphone. <laughs> I, I, I don't blame you. So, we learned that Jessica's not so sure about the time of death. She wants them to prove it scientifically that you could not hear it with a gunshot with the yes. rim shot playing. <laughs> so, she does a bunch of things and she like turns on a radio. little radio with some music. <laughs> She's like, the girls are up here dancing. Let's see if we can hear it now. And you can. And you can. So... Freddie is like, what are y'all doing up here with all this stuff? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, no. Watch out. A light comes flying at Freddie. Woo! Yes. I love it. Almost killed him. It almost killed him. Almost killed him. But he flung himself off the stage. Like, flung him. Just like, woo! Like, flung. Like, like Robin Hood. Like Robin Hood and Lil John walking through the forest. Oh, oh, I, I want to go watch movie. that movie now. That That's the best furry movie ever made. <laughs> you tell me you didn't think that Robin Hood was hot when you were I a kid. I don't think I did. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I had that thought process then. Did you ever have a cartoon you found very attractive? 
A cartoon? A cartoon. A cartoon persona or fursona that you found very attractive. When I was a kid. When you were a kid. Like 14, 15, like 13, 12, something like that. Oh, I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. Probably like, uh, I'm sure I thought, I'm sure like He Man, right? Like every like gay kid like He Man. Yeah. And something like that. Battle like, Toads. You know. Battle toads. Those they had good legs. I kid you not. They were frogs. Those frogs have big legs. <laughs> this conversation just keeps going in weird directions. <laughs> hey, at least I like this episode. I like the last thing I had to review. Well, that's the thing. I can't imagine what would happen if you hadn't liked this episode because, oh boy. Oh God. So now we're back at Novak's apartment. We're back at the apartment He's now. He's wearing yeah. a fantastically salmon-colored <laughs> Save the Whales uh, uh, robe. Um, uh, I love Novak. Jessica comes in. She picks up a cat that looks very annoyed. Yes. Um, and we, 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 we find out that the rope holding the stage light was not an accident. What? It was, it was, it was acid. Acid had burned through the rope. So now we're now we're back at 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 the court. Like we're just flying all over the place here. We are just bouncing back and forth a lot. Um, and Howard's in a new suit. He was just released on bail. And my my comment was, wasn't that the same suit at the beginning of the episode? Yes. <laughs> okay. So it's not a new suit. It's the same suit, but a new suit. Howard's doesn't have much of a of a wardrobe. Apparently not. Apparently not. <laughs> So, Jessica's like, you go, to, you go to lunch with Vicky. I need to go somewhere else. So she goes and finds Mrs. Drake on the on the driving range, right. in a fantastic outfit that Jessica's never seen in black before. But Mrs. Drake is in mourning. She looked good though. Uh-huh. She did look good. <laughs> We find out, so Jessica sort of, like, accuses her lightly of doing it. And she's like, hold up, it wasn't me. Let me tell you something. I better tell somebody, tell me about somebody. Baby girl. Mm, I'm the man from the big P. Anyway. I apologize for that. Don't. Give us more. Please, give us more. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Anyway, I will give you more of this, though. So we find out that Freddie's contract was a personal services contract, oh. and it's now null and void because it was only for Mr. Drake. Oh. So Freddie did it, is what she's saying. Or oh. or Bill. Freddie or Bill did it. Somebody, somebody, Somebody's really got it in for this guy. So now we're at the hospital. Yes. Jessica's bringing in some roses, uh, and and like Bill's like, I didn't do it. Freddie didn't do it. Freddie's like, oh, I, yeah, you just leave it alone, Bill. Just leave it alone. And like, she she Jessica's like, okay, well I'll see myself out. But thank you for your time. <laughs> but they also think that the lights could have been trying to kill me. So just watch your back. Yeah, because Jessica, they could have been going for you, girl. Uh huh. It might be time. Mercier might, might be. Mercier, it's already over. <laughs> oh, God. So now we're at the hotel. Mm-hmm. Jessica's very tired. She's very tired. But there's some construction going on in the room beside of her because it's San Francisco and shit falls apart there all the time. Yes. So she lies <laughs> down in bed and, like, in her full grandmotherly wardrobe. Just lying down, she just wants to catch a few Z's, and she pushes the pillows against her ears, and aha, light bulb. She has an aha moment. Aha, light bulb. <laughs> aha, light bulb. So, she runs over to Novak. Oh my gosh. We're running, we're running, we're running. There's here. always, Jessica's always got to run somewhere in every episode so the feather was the clue 
which we had at the very beginning. Yes. It was a silencer. It was a pillow. A pillow, you say? A pillow. A pillow. Yeah. A pillow. Look at these. They're, they're now in Mr. Drake's office. There's a pillow on the settee. He's like, there's a pillow right here. She's like, but look at these pictures that I had your uh, uh, assistant illegally give me. Yes. <laughs> He's even like, these are police photos. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> so she's like, yes, but if you notice, there was no pillow here at the time of the crime scene. So we know we now go to Freddie York's or no no no, no sorry I'm, I miss I missed a stay I missed a step here we then go to the stage it feels like clue at this moment like where they're all running say- around the different parts of the thing wait till we start getting into the <laughs> many episodes and they're all gonna feel like clue so we're now on stage and Jessica's on like I need to demonstrate something this Lieutenant Novak, you stand right there. You mm-hmm. stay right there. So she lets a sandbag fall, and he jumps back. Yes. And she's like, you, you moved. Why'd you move? Well, I heard it. She's like, exactly, just the same way Freddie heard the light come flying down. And he, Freddie's like, yeah, you got me. I heard that. So all you can do is know that because I was trying to, like, I was afraid and blah, 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 but I heard that. So then... Wow. They go up to Freddy's dressing room, which somehow got bigger. It did, actually. It's maybe shot from a different angle, I think. Yeah. And, like, she, she's like, well, the pillow, you made a mistake. You made a mistake. Because this pillow, <laughs> this pillow has light damage. And the light damage could only come from your pillow. And what you did, Freddy, what you did, what you did was you used the pillow that was in his office, but you got scared that we would figure it out. So you stupidly took a pillow from out here and took it in there to try to hide it. And he's like, yeah, dude, uh, that contract was horrible and I hated him. (laughs) Now, while I do love your sling blade, Uh every once in a while, you are saying some relevant information that you have to remember the audience can't always understand. Oh, I do apologize. I do apologize. I do... I can understand you because we grew up in Sleep Blade territory, but some of the audience might not always understand when you're actually saying something relevant there. I, I promise you, dear audience, most time it's just me mumbling. Like, <laughs> so he does say, "Could have knocked him dead." He, he says he could have knocked him dead in Vegas, right? So, yeah, he confesses to everything. He did it. He confesses. They take him in. Fast forward a day, there's a wedding. Turns out that Vicky and Howard got married, and the Mrs. Drake was there, Mr. Drake was dead, <laughs> Jessica's there, Lieutenant Novak's there, um, Barb is there. I, why is Lieutenant Novak there? I don't understand. Why is Barb <laughs> there? Like, where are all these people there anyway? <laughs> uh, he barely worked at that place almost any time. I know. So, uh, Patterson is there. Apparently, he wasn't even a com- an accomplice. Um, and after the wedding, he's like, Yo, Howard, I got you a job at a soap. It's only a two-day-a-week job. What kind of soap only films two days a week? Whatever. So, <laughs> like, but it's got money and insurance and all of this. And Jess is like, I don't like to give advice. Lie. But do it. Yeah. End of episode. It's no made no sense that no not at all. Oh. Howard got Howard had a good job lined up. Yes, yes, um, in real and, estate. In real estate and uh, in California. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> no, don't do that, Howard. So, how, what, what do you did you enjoy this episode? Oh yeah, I did too. This, I really did. This too. episode is ridiculous. It's and absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely I just, ridiculous. I love this so much. Uh, absolutely, it's. Yeah. I think that this well, this once again, right? I told you, there's just something that's so ridiculously silly about the entire thing. Even though 
they treat it so serious. It's not. Even... I, I will say that I think that Jessica had the most sexual chemistry with Novak of any of the men she's been with so far. Oh, definitely. It's like, yeah, I, I was actually wondering who Martin Landau would be, and I'm a little sad he died so early on, but whatever. Oh, yeah, because at first you're like, oh, that does seem like a good contemporary boyfriend for yeah, Jessica. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But then yeah. here comes that sex pot Novak. Oh, boy. Who, who was the Peter Falk of the 80s. Like, it, Novak, he had played, if you look at his thing, it's a list a list of crime dramas. And he's apparently in Murder, She Wrote multiple times as multiple different people. Oh, I can see that. I mean, I mean, think about it, right? Like, you have... Uh, I mean, back then, especially, typecasting was a yeah. real thing. <laughs> so, you know, money is money. <laughs> Either you're going to be a big Hollywood star or you're going to get typecast. Let, let's ask Cicely Tyson about typecasting. Let's do that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, there goes our... There goes mother, mother meme. She just, she just turned off her podcast. Thanks wow. for that. Wow. She's, like, she's like, don't you dare invoke her name. <laughs> I would think that she would agree with me. She does well in the in the latter half of her career. Yes, 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 yes. Good gracious, yeah. Well, I mean, the woman. I mean, it was hard for her to probably find roles that. Well, you know, when she uh, when she got too well, the thing is, like, when she got too old for theater, because theater is much more taxing on the yes, body, yes. and then she started just doing movies just to do them, because you knew she was having fun. But at the same time, you were like, "Why are you always? Why I am this wise black woman, and you will listen to what I have to say because I have lived on this planet for 120 years, just like that movie that I won the Emmy for, The Diary of Miss Jane Pittman." I now live the life of Miss Jane Pittman as an old woman. Like, she literally became the character that she won the Emmy for back in the 60s. So speaking of this, should we talk about Dr Drag Race Canada before we sign off this evening? I think most of our listeners are going to be like, um, we don't watch that show. Okay. Then we, we won't talk about it. Yeah. There was a travesty that happened on that stage. I don't I like just, it. I still don't like it. I still don't uh, like it. I am disgusted I was, by it. I will leave it at that. I was drugged up and not feeling well, and I was laying on the couch, and I still got angry. And I was like, I was, I was, I was not me. Me and yeah. my husband were both like, "Wait a minute, yeah, uh, what? Yeah, yeah. How? What? I, I, what?" I felt like it was racism, and it wasn't even a racism. It wasn't. It was just like, well, it's like you. It's like weirdest, the weirdest kind of pandering, though. Yeah, like, yeah. Rue would not have let that happen. No, no she would have. She would have seen that and said. Oh, oh! She would have been like, I mean, I think at worst, Rue would have seen the second look, acknowledged it, tried to see it from their perspective, uh -huh. but they, she would not have given a pass to the third outfit no. because no. compared to everyone else, yeah. it was booger, like just booger compared to everyone else. Yep. Anyway, mm. Mame, why, why don't we've talked for over an hour? Why don't you tell these dear listeners where they can find you? Yes, under a rock. No, just joking. <laughs> Sorry. Are you doing Kill Your Idol this week? <clears throat> it depends on how I feel tomorrow. Okay. Um, you know I'm Thursday's I'm, like one of the busiest days for a bar. Not down here. Okay. Not down here. I actually asked um, the, the, the dude that I co-host with. He was like, it's not it's not that big of a deal down here. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I know. I, that's why I, I know. Yeah, he said no. He said ours is like, he said stuff down here is more sad. Okay. It's like, it's just people have no families. Okay. And like, yeah, I was like, oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. Um. So if you are actually in real life, want to meet me and you are down vacationing in Miami, I do host uh, amazing colossal karaoke every Thursday night at uh, Kill Your Idol on Miami Beach on Espanola Way. Um, and what else do I do? Oh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at auntie.mame. You can find me on Facebook at I'm your auntie mame, one word. Um, I do occasionally do improv comedy at Villain Theater in Miami proper. You can find them at villaintheater.com. And what about you, Mims? So you can find me at Divine Miss Mims on Twitter. Um, you can find this podcast at You Slay Me Pod on Twitter. You Slay Me. You can find our Patreon. Thank you, Patreon supporters. Thanks, Patreon. Um, at at patreon.com backslash 
you slay me. You slay me. Um, you 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 can le leave us a nice review. Leave us leave us some comments. If you don't like the sling blade thing, say you guys are great. Five stars. Mims dropped the sling blade. Yeah. If you want me to keep my baritone voice, just tell me and I'll stay perpetually sick. You're going Whatever to stay we have to. Sick anyway. That Whatever is... we got to do to keep you guys happy. That's what we're gonna do. Happy and engaged. Happy and engaged. Happy, happy and engaged. And engaged. Uh, I do, I do like when I have a voice like this. I really do actually enjoy it. It sounds even better grating. in a microphone. Did you say that? Re I can't help it. My voice is grating. <laughs> I kid, I kid. It is I, grating though. I know. I, I hurt myself. I it's kid, like I kid. I don't kid that much. But I kid a little. Anyway, I kid. I kid. All right, girl. Well, Mame, say I, I ruined the joke. Just. Say you goodnight. Totally did. Yeah, good night. Have <laughs> have a happy Thanksgiving. Have a happy Natives People's Day. Have a happy if you don't even celebrate anything, just have a happy couple of days off. Happy, happy everybody. Bye. Bye.